right, President Joe Biden spoke to the nation in a rare primetime address. The president explaining why he believes it is crucial for Israel and Ukraine to win the respective wars that they're fighting. His speech coming as Israel prepares for potential ground operations inside Gaza. Israel's defense minister telling troops they would soon see Gaza, quote, from the inside. President Biden also brokered a deal with Egypt and Israel to allow a limited amount of desperately needed supplies into Gaza. And now the U.S. State Department is citing a possibility for more terror attacks, issuing a worldwide travel alert to Americans. In his speech tonight, the president also touched on the agonizing murder of a Plainfield six-year-old, Wadia Al-Fayoume, what police are calling a hate crime. NBC 5's Natalie Martinez joining us here in the studio with more of the president's remarks and the escalating tensions in the Middle East tonight. Natalie. Stephen and Allison, President Biden spoke to the nation for about 17 minutes and covered U.S. actions and hopes for two different wars in Ukraine and Israel. After his Oval Office address, he also spoke with the father and the uncle of a local boy murdered just because he was Muslim. The unconscionable stabbing death of six-year-old Wadea al Fayumi of Plainfield made its way to the national stage tonight. Wadea, a proud American, a proud Palestinian-American family. We can't stand by and stand silent when this happens. Biden, the first American president to travel to Israel during war, said on the day of his return, he's planning to introduce an urgent $100 billion security package request to Congress. Support our critical partners, including Israel and Ukraine, is a smart investment that's going to pay dividends for American security for generations. He also promised to bring trapped or kidnapped Americans home, calculating that at least 32 Americans are among the 1,300 killed in Israel. President Netanyahu and I discussed again yesterday the critical need for Israel to operate by the laws of war. That means protecting civilians in combat as best as they can. And the people of Gaza urgently need food, water, and medicine. Tonight, the Consul General of Israel to the Midwest heard the president say, if you stand for freedom and democracy, you stand for America and Israel. This is why Israel agreed to open the border between Gaza and Egypt for, you know, humanitarian corridor. Stop bombing Gaza now! Stop bombing Gaza now! Earlier tonight, two dozen protesters from the U.S. Palestinian Community Network gathered inside Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky's Skokie office to get her on the phone and demand that she uphold Palestinian rights. What we want from her is to actually act and talk like a real progressive. President Biden reminded the country that decisions today affect our future for decades to come and that we all must denounce anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Allison.